hackathons, a gathering of sweaty nerds to build and code weird projects in an impossibly short amount of time. All while not taking a bath. I'm a nerd. This was NGIT's Hardware Hackathon. And what does that mean? We got programs, 3D models, electronics. Yeah, yeah. I got the email a few weeks before, thought it would have been fun, and joined the Discord. Then I hopped onto a train, made some stuff, and went home. Actually, unbeknownst to me, a hackathon starts days in advance. The team hopped onto a Zoom call the moment the themes dropped, and we got to brainstorming. We cooked up a few ideas so that by the time we met in real life, we'd have no idea what to make. I got there an hour before signing and got to meet the crew. We got Muhammad, the leader, Ramil, the cool guy, Naman, the wizard, Omar, the creator, and me. The clamp. Before ordering our parts, we had a little bit more time to discuss what we wanted to make, and eventually decided on making a <laughs> pothole detector. Hi, Sam. Thanks for meeting with me today. No problem. So, Sam, why are potholes so dangerous? Yeah, so each year, nearly about a third of all car accident fatalities result from poor road conditions, with potholes being the most common among those conditions. And according to a AAA study, damages caused by potholes cost motorists about $3 billion a year in the U.S. And despite their widespread presence on streets, roads, and highways, potholes lack warning signs or markings, rendering them a significant hazard to drivers. So, potholes bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, potholes bad. Sam did this for a senior design project, and we were trying to figure this out in 24 hours. Honestly, we thought we could do this in 15 minutes. It did not take us 15 minutes. See, a key part of detection is some kind of sensory feedback, of which we decided to go visual. Using this camera and this lovely compact little bundle of joy was so amazing that- Yeah, no, this camera sucks. It's supposed to be compatible with the Arduino and the ESP32, but either we couldn't find the proper wiring diagram or the firmware we were trying to use just doesn't support this prehistoric turd. So eventually we decided to scrap the camera for an alternative seven hours later. So what would you say that the hardest part about this hackathon is this stupid camera right here? It doesn't work. Yes. This camera's not gonna work. This team finally got it to work after 13 hours or so by updating each row each time with a refresh rate of a whopping five seconds per frame. <laughs> You right? hacked the Dude, impossible camera. The judges will never know how hard <laughs> Wait, do they actually know how hard it is? Like, the judges will never know. They, they probably won't. No, it's gonna be like, oh, it's a right. shitty camera. I felt like part of this challenge was knowing when to give up. This team knew that the camera was never gonna work, so they same day Amazon a more compatible camera. <laughs> Bro, this camera did not work. <laughs> we spent like four yeah, hours not... trying to figure this camera out. Yeah. And this team decided to integrate their phones over Wi-Fi, and that's Fucking brilliant. At this point, I started to feel delirious. So I thought it would be fun to see how other people were suffering. So, in all honesty, how's it going? Pretty bad, pretty bad. It's like small setbacks. We're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> but we're, we are doing well. <laughs> oh God, I'm dying. We're getting there. It's pretty good. We're exhausted. We're having fun. Well, I wouldn't awesome. say good. <laughs> Awesome! Amazing! amazing. Oh, electronics guys getting back in an hour. <laughs> in an hour from where? The bar. Perfect. We're working on it. We're just a little bit behind, but it's like not that big of a deal. Bro, what's the premise again? Yeah, let's go. We're getting there. This is the first time something actually works. Yeah. We're, we're on track for most of the stuff. Yeah. Pretty good. good. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm gonna say I'm doing fine. We got this, guys. We got this. I give up. Mixed reviews, but overall, a 7 out of 10. Would suffer again. With the camera module out of the picture, we decided to go with plan B take advantage of the space and print random things. Then we got bored and went with plan A point B. We were going to still adapt the idea of using the mobile cameras. For the rest of the night, we tried to get our phones to broadcast the feed to our servers, run it through the detector, record and store the data so that the proper facilities can go, well, it says right here that we need exactly this amount. Perfect. Yeah, we didn't get that working either. <laughs> we're making work for you to listen up. It's gonna identify that what kind of seed uh, must uh, put there by which kind of person, and if that a particular bird eats that seed, that 
first picture is gonna be sent, sent to that person. <laughs> This was as far as we got with the pothole detector. My mother would agree. It was 6 a.m., a few hours before the death post deadline, which is a presentation submission that summarizes the goals and operations of the project. And so far, we had an AI that is capable of racism. <laughs> so we decided to go back to plan 2B. We weren't actually trying to figure out the camera the whole time. We felt it best to also make this. This is a hopper that would dispense a pre-calculated amount of infill based on the readings from the pothole detector. To do this, we added an ultrasonic sensor to measure the depth. If we had the size of the pothole and the depth, multiply them together, we have vault. Then we haphazardly turned a servo controller into a motor driver. Glued the ultrasonic to the bottom, structurally secured the hopper to the back, and boom, a car. Wow. <laughs> DB. And of course, we're gonna need a road to test this on. Eventually, we got this. Oh. Beautiful. Kinda. Though we had a detector and had pretty much figured out how to get it working on our phones, we didn't really have enough time to strap it onto the car and integrate everything. So this test was basically just the ultrasonic sensor. It would give a constant reading and once it passes a certain threshold, it says, hey, a divot. Once it sees that divot, it keeps driving for X amount of seconds. Then it deploys the payload. That's it. It would have been nice to get the detector working, but oh well. It goes how it goes. But even though we didn't really get to complete the project, we still placed our butts down at the morning ceremony. Yeah, even if we did have everything working to our standards, it wasn't that novel of an idea anyway. Especially with all of these other projects around. We're thinking about doing a sound net and monitoring. Essentially, record sound in urban areas, find out whether it's like sound coming from airport, construction sites, train buses, highways, car honks, gunshots, house parties going on and stuff like that during late hours. And we would try to analyze whether it's disturbing the people in the area. Our project is generating renewable energy and then using that energy to track various pollution levels. We have an attachable wind turbine as you see towards the top which involves usage of telemetry sensors integrated to a website. It'll help cities plan more ecological and more green setups for their city. We have red and bikes and scooters all laying across the ground. We want to create a sustainable infrastructure that allows commuters to safely commute using bicycles and scooters all around campus and all throughout cities. It's probably why we're here, which has an opening in the front, and then it then rotates and turns and locks the system. Um, and so that's just going to let you close automatically. So this enables users to essentially come up to a bike rack, put their bike in, uh, scan an RFID card to automatically lock the system. There are various turmoil environments throughout the world happening right now. In various locations, people experience wartime environments that affect their daily lives, their citizens, the community that they live in. And we hope to address this type of underrepresented challenge with unmanned aerial vehicles, otherwise known as UAVs. Monitoring temperature, humidity, air quality levels in the targeted area, and also large GPS coordinates for uh, any type of civilian or soldier being in some type of situation. So the focus of the project is environmental sustainability and environmental friendliness. Okay. And we took a focus on like air pollution and things of that nature. So we made a little box, it's going to be called Airproof. It's able to measure different kinds of things in the atmosphere, like ammonia, sulfur um, dioxide, carbon dioxide, benzene vapor, etc., etc., just pollutants in the air. So all this data is going to be sent online into a blockchain, so it's immutable. It basically spits out some nonsense. There's an AI component to it. Then you can actually have a normal, decent human conversation with it. Like the top 15 buzzwords combined into one. <laughs> now, right now, right now, we have the air quality data from this room. The LLM just goes, who farted? <laughs> I, I, I can probably do that. Was our project as cool as some of these? Probably not. Were we as organized as some of these groups? I'm pretty organized, right? I'm, I'm pretty organized. <laughs> <laughs> was I wishing that I was unalive by the seventh cup of coffee? <laughs> I was praying by the third. But it was an experience that I wouldn't trade anything for. Okay, maybe sleep. I got to meet some cool people. Learn some new skills. Made a toy hop topper top your roads yeah and best of all i got free food you can't do better than free food anyway that was my time at the hardware hackathon huge shout out to my team to the ngit makerspace for hosting to the staff who got us food check out my boy jack for the background music and a huge thanks to Belbus. i can't do a bull impression kelvin can you do a bull impression Bye,